Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be looking at division of complex numbers. I'm going to start out really simple. So let's say we have two complex numbers. The first one, I'm going to call it Z1. And let me call this A plus IB. Let's say we have a second complex number, Z2, which is equal to C plus ID. Now, if we want Z1 over Z2, this would imply A plus IB over C plus ID. Now, what is the problem with this? Generally, as we know it, a complex number would be expressed in the form. So this is the form we want it in. X plus IY, which tells me that I cannot have an imaginary part in my denominator. So technically what I need to do is to eliminate the imaginary part from my denominator. But how do I do that? We can recall a few things. Now going back to when we did division, when we did multiplication of complex numbers, we would recall that if we were to take a complex number, let me use this, x plus iy, and its conjugate, which is x minus iy. If we were to multiply these two, we would end up with the real part squared, which is x squared plus y squared. Good? So we're going to be applying a similar concept to eliminate the imaginary part from the denominator. So let's go right ahead. So what I have here is a plus ib over c plus id. The concept is that if I'm multiplying an expression to not change that expression, I have to multiply it by 1. So I would have to multiply this expression by the conjugate, which is c minus id over c minus id. Now, because the denominator is looking at two conjugates, we can go ahead and just use the shortcut. As we know, that when we multiply two conjugates, we get the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So right away, in my denominator, the real part is c and the imaginary part is d. So I'm going to end up with c squared plus d squared. Where my numerator is concerned, I can go ahead and do that the long way. So a multiplied by everything and ib times everything. So I'm going to have ac from keeping it alphabetical then a times minus id would give me minus i ad we have ib times c so we can say plus i b c and then we have ib times negative id so we can go ahead and say minus i squared bd all right if i were to break this down now i would have ac minus i a d plus i b c now i squared is negative one and this expression is already negative so what i'm going to have is a positive b d and this goes all over c squared plus d squared but i should be distinctively able to see the real part from the imaginary part so we can go ahead and say all right i'm going to have a c plus b d over my denominator which is c squared plus d squared where i have the minus i a d and a plus i b c we have to be careful here so we could say plus write the b c first so we don't get confused with the minus sign so we have b c plus a d well this would be a minus a d because here we have it being negative so minus a d all over c squared plus d squared and of course we want to put the i here to show that the b c minus a d all over c squared plus d squared is just the imaginary part so the i should not be in the numerator and it shouldn't be in the denominator so this is how we express it in the form x plus i y now we can see the real part distinctively and we can see the imaginary part distinctively as well so let's look at an example so here's a scenario. Given that Z1 is equal to 2 plus 4i and Z2 is equal to 1 minus i, my task is to find Z1 over Z2. Right? So this would imply Z1, which is 2 plus 4i, all over Z2, which is 1 minus i. Good. So we say the first thing we're going to be doing in order to break this down is to take the conjugate of the denominator here. So I'm going to have 2 plus 4i over 1 minus i multiplied 
by the conjugate of the denominator. And of course, the conjugate in this case would be 1 plus i. Well, we multiply by 1 plus i over 1 plus i because it's actually multiplying by 1, which is a multiplicative identity. In my numerator, I'm going to have to do it the long way, as you know. So we have 2 times 1, which is 2. 2 times i, that's 2i. 4i times 1, which is 4i. And then we have 4i times i, which we can go ahead and say 4i squared. Or we could simply say minus 4 because we know that i squared is negative 1. In my denominator, as you know, when we multiply two conjugates, it's the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. Good. So let's break, let's break this down. All right. So this becomes 2. 2i two plus 4i will give me 6i. And then we have 4i squared. i squared is negative 1, so it becomes a minus 4. All over 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is 2. This now becomes 2 minus 4, which is negative 2, plus 6i all over 2. And of course, we're going to have to separate this. So 2 into minus 2, that's a negative 1. And 2 into 6, that's 3. So we have negative 1 plus 3i. Here's a second example. If z is equal to 1 plus i all over 2 minus i, we're supposed to find the real and imaginary parts of z squared. All right, so let's see what we want to do with this. We know that z is equal to 1 plus 2i over 2 minus i. Now we have the option of squaring z as it is, or we can rationalize it first and then square it, which of course I think would be quite simpler or much simpler. So let's go ahead and take z. So z is equal to 1 plus 2i over 2 minus i. So we're going to rationalize this to get back in the same form. So this is what we're going to do. We have 1 plus 2i over 2 minus i. We take the conjugate of the denominator, which is 2 plus i, and of course, over 2 plus i. Now, let us deal with the denominator first. When we multiply 2 conjugate, as you know, it's the real part squared. So that's 2 squared plus the imaginary part squared. That's 1 squared. Let's go ahead and multiply the numerator. So we have 1 times 2, which is 2. 1 times i, which is i. 2i times 2, which is 4i. Then, of course, 2i times i, which is 2i squared. Breaking this down, I'm going to have 2 plus 5i. And, of course, i squared is negative 1, so we end up with a minus 2 there. All over 2 squared, which is 4, plus 1, 5. So this actually becomes 2 minus 2, that's 0. So that's 5i over 5, which is really 1. So what we have here is 1i, which we can just write as i. So we don't necessarily need to put on the 1 there, because we know that the real part is 0, the imaginary part is 1, which is the coefficient of the i. So this would imply that z squared equal i squared. And we know that i squared is equal to negative 1. Alright, so I think pretty much rationalizing z first and squaring it makes it much easier than trying to square the whole thing. And then you're going to have to still end up rationalizing it.